Our role in the project is to design the exhibition. So part of this is about designing the display systems for the work, um, and part of this is about making an exhibition which is an exhibit in itself. There's many facets to the fabrication of the project. We're working with a boat builder who's doing the composites. Now the, the fiberglass structure is only about four millimeters thick, so it's something which is, um, it's very, very thin, um, it's, it's very strong, and it gains that strength through its geometry. So the bodies are inlaid into the, uh, into the surface, the the height of those give it a certain structural depth. They operate like beams. A lot of our work is about the relationship between robotics and algorithmic design. So it's to ask the question, what does it mean to bring in the technologies from the new industrial paradigm and what implications will that have for architecture? So on the one hand, the digital work that we're doing, we're looking at algorithms such as um, those which come from swarm intelligence. So it's this idea that a series of very small things will interact to give give rise to the emergence of an architecture at the macro scale, at the large scale. So swarm intelligence, it's a concept that comes from uh, complexity theory, but it really describes the relationship between individual entities, we call them agents, and the way these agents interact in much the same way that, say, a flock of birds interacts or a school of fish or even something like slime mold, where all of these entities, all these agents, have very little intelligence or decision-making themselves, but collectively they are capable of solving complex problems or capable of generating highly emergent behavior. And it's this behavior that we're really interested in as a way of thinking about architectural design. The robots we're using, are they come from the manufacturing industry, particularly the automotive industry, the large robotic arms you see on, on car assembly lines. These are a very generic tool. Um, they have no particular application. So what we're now doing is designing particular tools to go on the end of them. And we've begun to realize that if you design the tool at the same time that you're designing the project, each can influence the other. So rather than either designing to the constraints of the tool that you know, or designing something perhaps quite whimsical digitally, and then trying to develop a tool that can achieve that, we're interested in the feedback between the two. So when you start the project, it's very much about wanting to achieve a certain type of, a certain type of line, a certain type of form, and realizing that there's certain eccentricities to uh, the robot, which makes that very difficult. And so then you start to realize, oh, well, what is it that it does well? Um, and then how does that influence how we design? So the design intention becomes a sort of a feedback. It becomes a feedback with the tools. There's a subtle but important difference between the type of nonlinear algorithmic design that we're working with and parametric design. So parametrics is describing a linear relationship between um, a parameter and a geometric manipulation. And uh, so this is something which is causal. What we're interested in is the way there's constant feedback between what comes out of the algorithm and then what is fed back into the algorithm. And so through that feedback loop, it's able to generate what we describe as a complex system. So something which is capable of generating emergent outcomes, as opposed to the linear causal parametric process, which is making something which has a far more direct relationship um, to the architect. We see this project very much as an architectural prototype. It's not simply, it's not a sculpture, it's not an art piece. It's something that's trying to deal with architectural problems. It's trying to deal with problems of the relationship between structure, ornament, surface.